and welcome to the Army Sustainment Command Packaging, Storage, and Containerization Center's video series on the care of supplies and storage, or COSIS. Module 1, Care of Long-Life Reusable Containers. This module will address the following topics, COSIS inspection, minor remediation, and major remediation. COSIS inspection and minor remediation of LLRCs is a non-technical process that can be completed quickly and effectively by just about anyone. The non-technical COSIS inspector cannot perform major remediations, but they do play a role in identifying the requirement. Because of this, we will speak briefly on the COSIS inspector's responsibilities regarding major remediations. Long life reusable containers come in all shapes and sizes. They are responsible for protecting the Army's most expensive and critical repair parts from the potentially devastating effects of corrosion. Major end items, such as ground vehicles, airplanes, and helicopters, are the sum of their parts. When they are in need of repair or overhaul, the repair parts must be ready for issue. Proper care of long life reusable containers is critical to ensuring major end item repair parts are ready for issue and do not deadline the item. Before we begin our inspection, ensure that all LLRCs are stored at ground level with the data plates facing out toward the aisle, with enough spacing between adjacent units to allow for a complete 360 degree visual inspection. If stacking is permissible, LLRCs should be stacked such that an inspector can clearly read all data plates and humidity indicators while standing on the ground. LLRCs are required to be inspected monthly. DA Form 7790 can be used for all COSIS inspections to create a record not only of the inspection, but also of any subsequent actions. Inspection data is entered on page 1 of the inspection sheet. Page 2 contains a list of possible discrepancies. Notice there is a specific section of discrepancy codes dedicated to container deficiencies. We begin our inspection with a thorough walk around of the LLRC. This part of the inspection process will determine if the LLRC is labeled correctly, is structurally sound, and appears to be capable of maintaining a water vapor proof seal. We can record any issues we find on the DA7790 by selecting the appropriate deficiency codes from page 2 of the form. Begin by examining the data plate. It should be secure to the container and legible. Make sure all sealable ports are secure. This includes the pressure release valve, desiccant port, humidity indicator port, document storage, and any viewports. As you walk your way around the LLRC, check the following. The container should be structurally sound with no penetrations or corrosion that would prevent a water vapor proof seal. Make sure the mating surfaces are flush. The mating gasket should be seated properly in its channel so that it does not overhang the lip of the container. Verify all mating hardware is present and appropriately tightened to maintain a water vapor proof seal. Lift rings and handles should be securely attached. If the LLRC is equipped with wooden skids, verify they are in good condition and all skids have a WPM stamp indicating the lumber has been heat treated. Now that the walk around is complete, we will turn our attention to the humidity indicator. It is the responsibility of the COSIS inspector to accurately interpret the humidity indicator and based on that information, take the correct action. These actions include performing minor remediations which we will discuss later, and if necessary, scheduling material movements for major remediations. Humidity indicators provide a measure of how much humidity or moisture exists inside the container. If the humidity exceeds a certain threshold, the item is at risk for corrosion. The higher the humidity, the greater that risk becomes. Taking the appropriate action based on the humidity indicator reading is critical to the preservation of the item. Humidity indicators fall into two general categories, irreversible and reversible. 
let's take a look at both types. Irreversible humidity indicators are white when the humidity is within acceptable limits and turn orange when the humidity is exceeded for a set period of time. As the name implies, once the humidity indicator changes color, it will not change back. If the humidity indicator is orange, the item must be scheduled for a major remediation as a full technical inspection of both the item and the LLRC is required. Of the two types of humidity indicators, reversible is the most common. As demonstrated by this elapsed video, reversible humidity indicators are blue when the humidity is within acceptable limits and turn pink as the humidity rises. In this example, we are using a three-spot indicator. The spots are chemically treated to turn pink when the relative humidity reaches 30, 40, and 50 percent. Conversely, when the humidity inside the LLRC is reduced to acceptable levels, such as through a minor remediation, the humidity indicator will return to blue. All reversible humidity indicators alert the inspector to humidity changes within the container. Relative humidity levels are expressed as a percentage. For example, when the spot containing the number 40 on the humidity indicators below turns pink, the relative humidity inside the container has reached 40 percent. There are three common variations of reversible indicators. They are the single, three, and four spot indicators as seen here. The simplest type of reversible humidity indicator is the single spot. The single spot is interpreted as follows. If the indicator is blue, the humidity is controlled and no action is required. If the indicator is pink, the humidity level has reached the threshold or maximum acceptable level and a minor remediation is needed to reduce the humidity level. If the indicator is white, the indicator has failed. If this is the case, place the item in batch code F and schedule a major remediation. Three and four spot humidity indicators have multiple values printed on them. These numbers correspond to below, threshold, and exceeded humidity levels. The lowest value on a three spot, or the lowest two values on a four spot indicator, are the below values. When they turn pink, that is your indication that humidity levels are rising inside the container. The next to highest value is the threshold value. This number indicates the maximum acceptable level of humidity the item can be exposed to while stored in the LLRC. The highest value is the exceeded value. When this spot is pink, the humidity has exceeded the maximum acceptable level. Three and four spot humidity indicators are interpreted as follows. If all spots are blue, no action is required. If the below and threshold values are pink and the exceeded value is blue, perform a minor remediation. If exceeded value is pink or white, move the item in GARMY to batch code F and schedule a major remediation. Now that we have covered the inspection requirements, let's turn our attention to the minor remediation process. To understand this process, we must first understand what desiccant is and how it is used. Desiccant is a moisture absorbing material that comes in bags of various sizes. LLRCs typically use 16 unit size bags, which comply with MIL-D 3464, type 1 and 2. Desiccant is available through the stock system. The national stock number shown here is for a 200 pound drum, which contains 150 each, 16 unit bags of desiccant. This drum should always remain securely sealed until the desiccant is needed. Since desiccant will begin absorbing moisture as soon as it is exposed to the outside air, the drum should remain open only as long as necessary to remove the required amount of desiccant, then securely latched closed. In this way, the desiccant remaining in the drum will remain fresh and ready for future use. An LLRC's desiccant port will hold several 16 unit bags. When fresh desiccant is placed in the sealed container, it will absorb the moisture inside, thereby controlling the humidity. However, there is a limit to how much moisture the desiccant can absorb. 
Once that limit is reached, humidity will begin to rise in the container and continue to do so until it equals the outside humidity level. To demonstrate the minor remediation process, we will use DA Form 7790 to perform a complete LLRC inspection based on what we have learned. Fill out the header information on the form, then conduct a thorough visual inspection of the LLRC. Work your way around the container, checking the data plate, pressure release valve, desiccant port, view ports, humidity indicator, and document holder. Make sure all of these items are securely attached. As you continue to walk around the LLRC, verify that the integrity of the container isn't compromised. The seal is good, all mating hardware is secure, and the lift rings and handles are functional. Record any deficiencies you find on the DA7790. Next, examine the humidity indicator. Here we observe that the below 30% and threshold 40% are pink, while the exceeded value of 50% remains blue. Record this deficiency on DA7790 as follows. Fill out the NIN, serial number, storage type, storage bin, quantity, and the inspection date. Next, enter the correct deficiency code from page 2 of the form. In this example, code 27, which states, LLRC has pink or lavender humidity indicator at the 30% level or greater, is the appropriate code. The action is INSP for inspection, and the humidity indicator reading is pink. For inspections, we only record observations. Therefore, we are not changing out the desiccant as part of the inspection process. That will come next. Under Remarks, input that a minor remediation is required. Once the inspection is complete and the deficiency is identified, we can go ahead and perform the minor remediation. Begin by unscrewing the desiccant lid and remove all of the desiccant. Be sure to dispose of the old desiccant so that it is not mistakenly reused. Next, fill the desiccant port with as much fresh desiccant as it will hold. Take note of how much desiccant is used, as this will be recorded on the DA7790. Lastly, securely reattach the desiccant lid to the port. Once the remediation is complete, document it on the DA7790. Since the first five columns are the same, we can label them as such. Next, enter the date you perform the remediation. The deficiency code remains 27. For the action, write DC1 to indicate the first desiccant change. Indicator reading is pink. Under units, Write 16, as the size of the desiccant bags we are using are 16 units each. Under quantity, enter the number of bags you placed in the port. For remarks, record that a 24-hour wait period is required prior to rechecking the humidity indicator. After 24 hours, recheck the humidity indicator. Our goal is for all of the humidity indicator spots to be blue. However, in this example, we see that the 30% spot remains pink. When the first desiccant change does not result in all spots being blue, a second remediation is performed. The second remediation is done identically to the first. Remove and dispose of the old desiccant. Load the port with new desiccant. And securely close the lid. Once the remediation is complete, Document it on the DA7790. We will enter this action directly under the line containing the first desiccant change. Enter the date you perform the remediation. 
the deficiency code remains 27. For the action, write DC2. This represents the second time we are changing the desiccant. Indicator reading is pink. Enter the correct number of units and the quantity of desiccant. For remarks, record that a 24-hour wait period is required prior to rechecking the humidity indicator. After 24 hours, recheck the humidity indicator. If all spots are now blue, the humidity is controlled. At this point, perform a final remediation. Remember that the desiccant currently in the LLRC has been absorbing moisture for the past 24 hours. This final desiccant change ensures that the desiccant in the LLRC is fresh and capable of maximum absorption. Once the remediation is complete, document it on the DA7790. We will enter this action directly under the line containing the second desiccant change. Enter the date you perform the remediation. The deficiency code is now 99, indicating no deficiencies in any category. For the action, write DC3. Indicator reading is blue. Enter the correct desiccant units and quantity. And for remarks, record that the LRC is now fully mission capable. If, after two remediation attempts, any spot on the humidity indicator is still pink, the inspector will have no choice but to schedule a major remediation. This requires that the item is moved to batch code F and schedule a technical inspection of the item to verify the condition. This would be reflected on the DA7790 accordingly. Note that the deficiency code would remain 27, indicating a pink humidity indicator. Since we are no longer attempting to remediate, record the action as inspection. And under remarks, we record that the item requires a major remediation. In this module, you learn that monthly COSIS inspections of LLRCs are required and consist of a thorough visual inspection of the container and correct interpretation of the humidity indicator. When the exceeded spot of a humidity indicator is pink or white, the item is moved to batch code F and a major remediation is scheduled. When the exceeded spot is blue and any other spot is pink, a minor remediation is required. A minor remediation requires that all desiccant be removed from the LLRC and new desiccant is installed. If the first minor remediation does not restore the indicator to blue, then a second remediation is conducted. If after the second remediation the indicator is still pink, move the item to batch code F and schedule a major remediation. Lastly, DA7790 is the form used to record and track COSIS inspections and minor remediations. And always remember, Knowing that your stock is ready for issue in batch code A condition isn't an accident. It's COSIS. Do you have a packaging, hazmat, shelf life, or WPM question? PSCC Packaging and Transportation Division wants to help. Give us a call or send us an email and let us know how we can assist you.